Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Butterfly Barbecue Pork Chops. Well today we're cooking up some big pork chops. We're talking the double cut butterfly open. So these things look as big as a 12 or 14 ounce steak. We're gonna start with a brine on them and this is really key for getting a lot of moisture into this lean meat and a lot of flavor in there as well. So let's go ahead and dive into the trimming process and then we'll get into brining and cooking. So what we have here is a section of the boneless pork loin. This was from our friends over at Creekstone Farm, great pork. Uh, as you can see, it's got the fat cap on. It's about three and a half pounds or so, which is great for, we're doing 12 to 14 ounce portions. Uh, on the outside, I'm just gonna trim off any stringy stuff, but honestly, I'm not gonna do much. I want to leave this fat cap on here, even though I know there's silver skin underneath because I want some extra fat on this lean piece of meat when we're cooking it. That fat drips down and comes back up in the form of flavor. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna get into cutting out these chops. I wanna get four really good sized chops out of this. So we're gonna divide this into quarters here. And then we'll take each individual section and butterfly it out. So the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna come from the fat cap side down toward the bottom. You can see the bottom's a little bit flatter. This top part's a little bit more rounded right in the center here, and we're gonna cut down but not go all the way through. So essentially just going to cut this until we can kind of push it open. And now you've got this one big pork chop. So once again, right in the center, we're gonna go straight down, but not all the way through. Press that open. Simple as that. All right, so now we're gonna put our brine together. We've got the briner mini out, the four quart. I'm gonna put just under two quarts of water in here, and we may not even need it all, but we can scoop some out. We've got the butcher house brine we're gonna use today. Just your really standard brine here. Great salt, pepper, a little sugar, garlic, onion. I'm doing one cup of that to our two quarts of water. And then we're simply going to drop our chops in here. Now let's talk about brine time. These are going to go, I'm going to let these go about a full 24 hours. Overnight's great. Any less than that, you know, I've tried even just two hours, I've tried six hours. The best results seem to be when you can go a full day or overnight. It really allows all of those flavors to work their way into the meat. So we'll keep that submerged. We'll take out some of that excess. Slap a lid on it and throw it in the fridge. But today we're cooking on the Kamado Joe Kettle Joe. Uh, it's a pretty brand new grill. We've been cooking on it for about a month now and it's a lot of fun, great experience. Kind of a, a hybrid of those classic kettles and the Kamado style grill. So let's go ahead and get some charcoal lit up down in the ceramic firebox. All right, so we've currently got this set up for smoking with the slow roller in place. We'll remove this whole ring later when we go to do our high heat sear to finish, but for now we're gonna leave that in place for the smoking. We get this loaded up with some lump charcoal. I don't wanna do too much charcoal to start with because we are gonna be cooking at a low temperature. Shooting for about 250 degrees we wanna stabilize it at initially. I started a batch of these pork chops yesterday, so we're gonna pull those out of the brine now and get them seasoned up. And that's what they look like after 24 hours. Not a drastic change on the surface, but definitely firmed up a bit. And because of the amount of salt that's in our brine, I'm gonna go ahead and take these inside and rinse them off with cool water so we kind of rinse that surf surface of any extra salt. All right, so we got these rinsed off, a little moisture left on the surface, which is fine because we're going to be seasoning these up and that'll help bind our seasoning to the meat. For our seasoning today, we're using the Cattleman's Grill 
trail dust, all-purpose seasoning. A lot of savory flavors in there. We're kind of working from that angle, and we're going to catch up with the barbecue side of things when we glaze this here at the end. Make sure we work that rub into the meat so it's attached. Do the same thing on the back side here. So as soon as the grill is ready to go, our chops are ready to go. So we're sitting just a little above 250 on our thermometer, so we're just gonna pinch this down just like on a Kamado. We're just gonna shut down our airflow a little bit up top and down low. All right, so we've stabilized that temperature with the diffuser here in place to really give us the right idea. Now we're gonna go ahead and take that out of there and throw a chunk of pecan wood down in here. And we have smoke, we have a little fire ignition going on there, so let's close this back up. And we'll get our grill grates in place. And on go the pork chops for our initial smoke here. We'll close this up and let them smoke away. Now for this smoking period, we want that temperature to stay in 225 to 250 range. Uh, we're looking to bring our pork chops up to an internal temperature of about 125 degrees, at which point we're going to pull them off. We're going to reset the grill for direct grilling and get some hot charcoal in there and finish them with a sear. All right, so we've gotten to our target temp of 125 over the last 45 minutes or so. For now, we're going to pull these off the grill. Now, this is not a target finishing temperature. This is just for the smoking portion. Because remember, we're doing the reverse sear, so we're going to get this set up to finish these chops off and taking them up to 145. But we need to set up for direct grilling. We'll just kind of loosely cover that with foil for now. So now we're going to take our slow roller attachment out of here and we're going to lower down the lid So it fits flush and then we'll get set up for some direct grilling. Now we have some good charcoal in here. I'm going to add just a little bit more so we can get a really nice high heat sear. I just kind of got this started in a chimney. We'll let it finish off warming up in here though. All right, close it up. Make sure our airflow is open all the way up top and down low. All right, the grills come up to almost 550 degrees now. I'm gonna pop these grates down just a little bit lower to get us closer to that direct heat. And then pork chops going right on top of these coals here. I think initially here, we're just gonna leave the lid open so that we don't bring that internal up too quickly. Are right, we giving this a good five minutes or so Get some nice browning going on, so we're going to flip these over. Yeah, those are looking beautiful. Now the centers of these pork chops are just about where they need to be, so we're just heating through the bottom side at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and pour on some of our Firebug Mild grilling sauce, and this is going to be that little barbecue sauce glaze finish at the end. So we're getting just a touch of sweetness to go with some of those savory flavors that we put into our pork chops. We'll brush this on to this side now so it can start to kind of tack up. And then as these finish, we'll glaze the opposite side. These are about ready to come off now. Nice color, come up to 145 on the internal temperature right in the center. So we're gonna glaze this opposite side and then we'll pull them off. Let's get these off here quickly because we don't want scorching going on on our barbecue sauce down below. All right, let's slice into it. These have had about five minutes to rest now, so our juices should be redistributed. I'm going to run this just right through those juices at the end there that collect on the plate because there's so much flavor in those, but you can see how you've got your, your butterfly there. This stuff is really tender, you know. 
a fantastic pork chop. There's so much flavor. Doing that brine adds so much to the pork chop. This is kind of a simple piece of meat. It's definitely very lean. You have to make sure you don't overcook it. It's never going to be pouring juices out like when you slice into a, a brisket point or something like that. But this is a fantastic lean meat that you can still do with a barbecue flavor profile. And we're picking up all that smoke. I mean, that natural, real pecan wood smoke from inside that charcoal bed. The flavors are fantastic. The texture is great. That's a nice little weeknight or weekend barbecue dinner. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue or barbecue legends are made.